So um, hello, everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, what I'm going to talk about today, so I, I wanted to, to do a couple things. One is I wanted to say a bit more about um, uh, what a cohomology theory is and, um, and what Brown representability means and things like that. Um, I can go, uh, I'm, I'm not sure who is actually interested in, in seeing like a proof of Brown representability, um, but maybe isn't there like a, I thought, I thought there was a way to, to sort of uh, poll people or have them raise their hands, um, but I can't find it. So, okay, um, I'm gonna start talking. If you feel like this is boring, say it's boring in the chat. And if you feel like it's exciting, say it's exciting. Um, so uh, so let me remind you um, the, the way that we've been talking about, um, about cohomology theories. So we've mainly been talking about, whoops. Uh, Sorry. Okay. Sorry, technical issues. Um, so we've been talking about uh, reduced cohomology theories, and a reduced cohomology theory is supposed to satisfy the Eilenberg Steenrod axioms. Um, so these are functors. from uh, the opposite category of spaces, uh, pointed spaces to graded abelian groups um, that are a homotopy invariant. So they send homotopic maps to the same map of graded abelian groups. And this also implies that they send homotopy equivalent spaces to isomorphic um, cohomology groups. Uh, it's supposed to send a cofiber sequence to a long exact sequence. And actually, as we, as we saw last time, um, what really has to happen is uh, you need for a, a cofiber sequence of spaces. Um, so if I have some inclusion of, uh, of CW complexes and I take the, the mapping cone of the inclusion, um, then this should go to an exact sequence of cohomology groups. Um, so by exact, all I mean is it's exact here. But as we've seen, these sequences can be extended um, in such a way that every sequence, every subsequence of three terms is also a cofiber sequence like this. So this actually implies that you have a long exact sequence. Um, third, it's supposed to send uh, wedges of spaces to products of graded abelian groups. And fourth, there's supposed to be a suspension isomorphism. So, um, so what this is, is a natural isomorphism from the uh, cohomology of um, let's say the degree n cohomology of the uh, of x to the degree n plus one cohomology of the suspension of x. So uh, the way that this is related to other flavors of cohomology um, is, uh, so first of all, this is for pointed spaces. Actually, I probably should have said pointed CW complexes. Um, so, because the sort of representability theorem that we're gonna end up proving is, is really for functors on CW complexes. Um, so if you have an unpointed space, uh, you can define You can define an unreduced cohomology theory, um, which is the same as the reduced cohomology of X together with a disjoint base point. Um, and then there's also a, uh, at, at one point in time, um, people spend a lot of time talking about cohomologies of, uh, of pairs. Um, so, If you have a pair, xA, where x is a 
is a sub CW comp or A is a sub CW complex of X, then this is the same as the reduced cohomology of X mod A. Um, okay. Uh, so the Brown, the first version of the Brown representability theorem says um, that that any such functor E is represented by a sequence of spaces. Um, so there are spaces EN such that uh, the nth E cohomology of X is naturally isomorphic to the set of homotopy classes of maps from X into EN. Um, for all pointed uh, connected CW complexes. Um, so, right, what, so what is there to say about this? Um, one, one thing that I was sort of surprised to to find when I when I was reading about this the other day is that um, this this condition this connectedness condition is apparently necessary for this for this theorem to even be true. Um, so if we if we talk about cohomology theory satisfying the Eilenberg Steenrod axioms, that's not really a big deal because um, you, you should be able to recover the cohomology of a space by suspending it uh, however many times um, and taking the cohomology of that and then shifting that down uh, and the um, and so after suspension, any any space becomes connected. Uh, but the the way that this was originally proved um, did not have the suspension isomorphism as part of the axioms, uh, and just had sort of versions of of these axioms, um, and and that sort of thing can fail if you don't restrict to connected things, um, which is pretty weird. So um, so I think. Yeah, whatever. I'm not. I don't need to go into crazy amounts of detail about this. All right. So here's the idea behind the proof. Um, so what we need to do is um, is we need to define these spaces that have this property, and by the Yoneda lemma. Uh, we're supposed to, there's supposed to be a class, let's say CN in the cohomology of EN such that um, for any, for any X and for any any class D in the nth cohomology of X. There is a map from X to EN, let's say P, such that um, the pullback of CN along P is equal to D. Okay, and actually this map should be unique up to homotopy. Um, So, so we need to define these spaces, but at the same time as we're defining them, we also need to define these cohomology classes. Okay, so, so you do this, you define these as CW complexes and you do it inductively um, by attaching cells. So you start um, by saying EN zero is a point and assume inductively that we have ENR such that um, such that we have the isomorphism for all spheres of dimension between one and R.
and I guess when, when I say we have this space E and R, we also have a cohomology class. CNR. Okay, so to build the next one, um, what we need to do is, uh, it, it's sort of two steps. So first you attach um, R plus one spheres for, for each generator. of the cohomology of SR plus one. Okay, so this, this gives you some space of the form um, E and R wedge a whole bunch of R plus one spheres. Okay, so now the wedge axiom says that um, that the cohomology of this, this object Uh, splits up as a product and inside this product um, we have the the cohomology class that we that we started with over here and then in the cohomology of each of the spheres, each of these spheres is supposed to correspond to a generator of En of SR plus one. So you just, um, you pick the corresponding generator. Okay, so, um, so what we end up with is, uh, So there's a map from this to the, the cohomology of, uh, of SR plus one. Um, and this map is a surjection uh, because um, we've, by the, the choice of the cohomology classes on each of these factors, we've hit all the, all the generators. Okay. And also by attaching these R plus one cells, we haven't, um, we haven't changed uh, the maps from smaller dimensional spheres into this. And that's just because a map from a smaller dimensional sphere into a larger dimensional sphere is, is null homotopic. Um, so then what you do is you attach cells to kill off the kernel. So you attach, um, you attach R plus one cells to kill the kernel. And again, those don't affect the cohomology, or those don't affect maps from smaller dimensional spheres into, into this object. So this defines the next space in the sequence. Okay, and then finally, um, the space that we're looking for is, is supposed to be the union of these subcomplexes. Um, ENR as R goes to infinity. And this, um, we could also think of this as a homotopy co-limit of these things. And then what you show is that, um, so, so one, of, one of the odd things uh, is that it's, it's not immediately clear that taking cohomology commutes with this homotopy colimit in a nice way. But it turns out that it, um, that uh, as a result of the, of the axioms about cofiber sequences and about uh, wedges, um, it commutes with it uh, enough to, uh, to give you the following statement, um, that there's a surjection from this into uh, to the limit of these cohomologies. Okay, so so we have these classes C and R in each of the in each of the um, in each of the cohomologies of E and R. By construction, each one maps onto the uh, 
onto the previous one. Um, and so they assemble to give you a class in the limit, which is the um, which you can then lift to a universal class here. Um, the reason why this is true, by the way, so this this homotopy colimit is is sort of a special kind of homotopy colimit. It's a it's a homotopy colimit of a of a sequence. Um, so it's indexed by by natural numbers. Um, and there's a very nice way to write such homotopy colimit. So anytime we have a homotopy colimit. Um, indexed by natural numbers, um, we, can, we can write this as the mapping cone, uh, as the cofiber of, oh yeah, I think I, I think I can't say it this way. Sorry, let me, let me try this one more time. Um, So, so let's say that we have a bunch of spaces XR. Uh, you can take the wedge of all of the XRs. And there are two ways to map this into itself. Um, one is via the identity. And if these are if these are coming from a functor from the natural numbers to spaces, so they come with these, these structure maps from XR to XR plus one. Um, then there's a map from from the wedge to itself that applies the um, each these structure maps to go from each uh, sum and to the next sum and. Okay, so the the homotopy pushout of this diagram is the same as the homotopy colimit of the XRs. Um, and so what happens is if uh, if you know that your your functor sends uh, wedges to products, and um, and you know that it sends uh, it sends cofiber sequences to um, to long exact sequences, uh, well, first of all, this this pushout square can also be thought of as a cofiber sequence. So you can rewrite it as as this. Um, and then plugging it into into ecohomology, uh, what you get looks like this. Okay, and this is just a piece of a long exact sequence. In particular, there's um, there's going to be a map from uh, from this cohomology group shifted down by one into this. But this at least tells you that the cohomology of the homotopy colimits rejects onto the onto the the um, the kernel of this map, and the kernel of this map is um, is the limit of the cohomologies of the x's. Okay. So anyway, so the, the point of all this is um, is this defines a space En that, that represents the cohomology theory on um, on spheres, and then you have to show that it does that on all CW complexes, um, and this is another sort of inductive argument. You build any CW complex out of spheres, you know what the cohomology does to um, to wedges, you know what it does to cofiber sequences. So that gives it to you on all finite CW complexes. And then to handle infinite CW complexes, you need to make another one of these homotopy colimit arguments. OK. Um, so that's, that's sort of a sketch of how this proof works. Uh, and I think it's probably all um, anyone wants to hear about it anyway. Um, so, so, so now that I've talked about that, um, let me point out that that in this in this entire argument, I was only focusing on a single value of n, um, and I didn't use the suspension isomorphism at all either. So, what's the point of the suspension isomorphism? Well, let's say that we have these spaces en. Uh, 
So, so these spaces have the property that the nth ecohomology of X is equal to homotopy classes of maps from X into EN. So the suspension isomorphism tells you that there's a natural isomorphism between the EN cohomology of X uh, and the EN plus one cohomology of suspension of X. And so if you use the representability theorem and you, um, and you apply the suspension loops adjunction, So this says that there's there's a natural isomorphism between um, maps maps from X into EN and maps from X into loops EN plus one um, for for all uh, pointed CW complexes uh, pointed connected CW complexes X. Um, so so you have these two functors that represent the same thing. On, on the homotopy category of CW complexes. And that means that, that these two spaces must be weakly homotopy equivalent. So this is a weak homotopy equivalence. So the sort of object that represents a cohomology theory that satisfies all of the eilenberg steenrod axioms is a sequence of spaces like this, um, where each space is weakly homotopy equivalent to the loops on the next space. Okay, and so this is this is kind of the inspiration for um, for the definition of spectra that I'm about to tell you. Uh, any questions before I before I move on? So, sorry, I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. At the end there, are you saying that we can sort of go the other way? That if we have a sequence of spaces with choices of homotopy equivalences like weak homotopy equivalences like this, yep. we can build up a. Okay. Yes. Um, so, as part of that, uh, that's that's a good question. Um, part of the reason for that is is the fact. So, so let's let's um, let's actually just focus on one of these spaces and let's think about the axioms. Um, so, first of all, if you're thinking about homotopy classes of maps from uh, X into EN, this is homotopy invariant in X. Which is the first axiom. Um, uh, maps out of a wedge. This is the same as the product of the sets of maps, which is the second axiom. And then the third axiom um, was something that I proved last week. And uh, Brendan, you weren't here, but but um, it, it has to do with the fact that, uh, well, actually, it's not. If, if you think about these, these sequences, let me scroll up. Um, I mean, these sequences come out of mapping cones, so so you can think about maps from a mapping cone into, into some space as the same as maps from X into that space together with a null homotopy of the restriction to, to A into that space. Um, and this gives, you, this gives you the kind of exactness that, um, that you need. Uh, so yeah, let, let me not write that down, but, um, but if you wanna talk about it more, we can talk about it afterwards. And there are abelian groups because you have the, the co-group thing, right? On the loop space. Uh, right, right, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. All of these, all these ENs are loop spaces. So, um, so they are group objects in the homotopy category. So maps into them is also a group. Okay. Um, so here's the, first, here's the first definition of spectra. So a spectrum is a sequence of pointed spaces uh, xn indexed by natural numbers 
um, with maps from the suspension of Xn to Xn plus one. Um, by adjunction, these are, these are equivalent to maps from Xn to the loop space of Xn plus one. Okay, so, so already we, we, we see an example of such a thing. Um, so given any cohomology theory, uh, E star, we have all of these, all of these spaces that represent the various cohomology functors. Um, so the representing spaces uh, En form a spectrum. And actually, this is a spectrum with a special property. So um, not only do we have these maps from En to loops En plus 1, but these maps are also all weak homotopy equivalences. So um, sometimes a, a spectrum with this property, where each space is supposed to be weakly equivalent to loops on the next space, instead of just mapping into the to loops on the next space, is called an omega spectrum. Um, so. This is called an omega spectrum. So let's look at some other examples. So let's suppose we have a space, a pointed space K. The suspension spectrum of K is the spectrum, this is written sigma infinity of K, um, and its nth space is uh, the nth suspension of K. Okay, the structure maps are, I need a map from the suspension of the nth space in the spectrum to the n plus one space. And this is just the, the obvious uh, uh, homeomorphism. Um, Okay, so this is not an omega spectrum because the the adjoint to this map is uh, is very rarely an equivalence of any kind. Um, there there are a few of these of these spectra associated to cohomology theories, with which it's worth mentioning. Um, Explicitly, small question. Yeah, um, are these uh, are these indexed by natural numbers or integers? Uh, these are indexed by oh, the the spectra. Yeah, the spaces by natural numbers. Hold on a second. My my um, I got kicked out of the. Dope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait. Um, I should be able to just share again. Okay, great. We're back. Uh, so um, yeah, these are these are indexed by natural numbers. Oh, okay. All right. Because, okay. Thanks. Um, in some sense, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll sort of see at some point that uh, it doesn't really matter because somehow specifying like a co-final subset of these spaces in the spectrum should be enough data to recover the whole spectrum. All right, so, he, so here are a few examples of um, spectra associated to cohomology theories. The, um, so if you have an abelian group, there's the eilenberg maclean spectrum. Um, So sorry, is the claim that in general this adjoint is a weak homotopy equivalence? No, no, no. So so um, for for spectra defined in this way, it is. Um, I, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, 
So the eilenberg maclean spectrum is, uh, is the spectrum um, HA, whose nth space is the nth eilenberg maclean space of A. Okay, so, so in case some of you haven't seen this, um, this is defined by the property that, uh, that its homotopy groups are just equal to A concentrated in degree N. So A for star equals N and zero otherwise. Um, and, and the reason why it matters is that it represents the, it, it represents degree N cohomology with coefficients in A. Um, so this is the spectrum associated to ordinary cohomology with coefficients in A. Uh, and um, you can check from this definition that uh, KAN is weakly equivalent to loops on on KAN plus one, just because of the way that loops uh, ships the homotopy groups. Um, the, the complex K-theory spectrum, KU, has KUN equal to uh, Z cross BU for N even, and U for N odd. Here U is the, the infinite dimensional unitary group. Um, so the structure maps here are that, uh, well, U is just equal to loops on Z cross BU. And then the other structure maps from, uh, wrong way around. So Z cross BU is equivalent to loops on U by bot periodicity. Yeah, this is the one I was thinking of when I asked about the integers, because it seems like right. you need Z as many of them here, right? Um, but I, I don't think that, I mean, this is a, this is a perfectly decent definition for, um, even if N, it just ranges over natural numbers. Okay. Yeah. So it, you're, you're probably concerned, yeah. I mean, this, sure. this does Let's cut it off. Yeah. Okay. Um, like you might be concerned about KU having having negative homotopy groups, and and it does have negative homotopy groups, uh, as as we'll see, we'll see in a second. Um, okay, so that's so that's KU. Uh, likewise, there's real K theory. Um, So I think the easiest way to define this is to say that um, every eighth space in the spectrum is Z cross BO. Uh, KO eight and minus one is, or sorry. No, that's what I mean. So this is loops on Z cross BO, et cetera. And then to define the missing structure map, um, you use real bot periodicity, which says that the eightfold loop space on Z cross BO is equal to Z cross BO. Okay, so these are these are also omega spectra. They're also associated to cohomology theories um, to, to complex K theory and real K theory. Uh-oh. Uh All right, we'll fix that one in, uh, in post. Um, here's some other things that we can do. So um, let's write let's write SPA for the category of spectra, which I have not completely defined because I haven't told you what maps between them are. Um, so the category of spectra is tensored and cotensored over spaces. Um, and using this definition, this is this is pretty easy to define. So, um, given x in spectra and k in spaces, um, you can define a spectrum x smash k, whose nth space is just the nth space of x smashed with k, um, and then you have uh, structure maps 
from the suspension of Xn smash k. So suspension distributes with or commutes with the smash product. Uh, so this is the same as suspension Xn smash k. And that goes to Xn plus one smash k using the structure maps on X. Um, likewise, there is a spectrum of maps from k into X. So we'll write this like this uh, for f for functions. Um, so this is the, the function spectrum from k into x, and the nth space here is just uh, is just the function space from k into the nth space of x. Um, and now you have structure maps from functions from, sorry, functions from k into xn to functions from k into, functions from k into loops xn plus one using the structure map on x. And this is the same as um, loops on functions from k into x and plus one. All right, um, here's one more example. So these are, these are called Tom spectra. So Tom spectra are built out of Tom spaces. Um, and I'll, I'll just show you sort of the, the simplest example of this. So um, let's recall that, that BON uh, classifies Uh, n-dimensional real vector bundles. And in particular, there's this universal um, n-dimensional real vector bundle, Cn. This is the universal bundle over, over BON. Um, and the way you define the Tom space of a vector bundle, there, there are two equivalent ways to do it. One is you take the, the disk bundle of Cn. Um, so, so this is a bundle over BON where each fiber is, is a disk, an n-dimensional disk. And the boundary of each of those disks is a sphere, and we identify all of those boundary spheres to a point. So you quotient by the sphere bundle. Um, another way to define it is you take the total space of Xn and um, you, you take the one point compactification of the total space of Xn. Okay, this, this confuses people sometimes. Let me emphasize that um, you're not quotienting fiber-wise by the sphere bundle, you're identifying the entire sphere bundle to a single point, um, which is this compactification point. Uh, so this is a tom, this is a, a pointed space where the base point is the compactification point. Um, also, there's a map from BON to BON plus one. And what this does to bundles is if you have an RN bundle, you add a one dimensional trivial bundle onto it to get an RN plus one bundle. Um, so in particular, if we take the universal bundle here and we pull it back to BON, this is just CN uh, together with a trivial bundle added to it. Okay, so we have a map between these bundles and this induces a map between their Tom spaces. So this induces... Sorry, what's the, the map between uh, the map on the bottom? On the bottom? So the map on the bottom, um, I, I set it in terms of what, uh, 
in terms of a natural transformation that it represents. Um, so, uh, sorry, let me move this out of the way. Um, so maps from X to BON are supposed to be uh, RN bundles on X. Maps from X to BON plus one are supposed to be RN plus one bundles. And what this map does, um, what this map does between these two functors is it sends an RN bundle over X uh, to um, that same bundle together with a with an extra trivial bundle. So the direct sum of V in a trivial bundle over X. Uh, geometrically, you can you can think of uh, the VONs are Grassmannians of um, n planes in R infinity. And so there's an inclusion from, ooh, I'm not sure I, re I remember how to do that actually. Um, maybe someone else does, uh, but I mean, somehow, Yeah, I don't know. R infinity, there, there's probably an extra R floating around somewhere. Um, oh, I just got some uh, some corrections in the chat. Um, you're only compactifying in the fiber direction. You want the Tom space of the trivial line bundle on X to be the suspension of X, which isn't compact if X isn't. Oh. So Jeff, are, is the is this description right? The disk bundle above the sphere bundle, um, and the problem is just calling it a a compactification. Okay, okay, great. Um, thanks for pointing that out. I had not realized that uh, that subtlety. Um, yeah, no, I mean I I agree that. Um, non-compact things are, are worth thinking about. Uh, that's, um, yeah, okay, so this is, so this is incorrect. Uh, it's, it's correct for, um, for com compact bases. Uh, but okay, so let's, um, let me go back to, uh, to the spectrum I was trying to define. So, um, So you have this map between these two bundles. And this induces a map between their Tom spaces. Um, and the Tom space of, uh, of this is the same as the suspension of the Tom space of Xen. Um, so essentially, if you if you add on an R, if you add on a, a one-dimensional trivial bundle to your bundle, um, each of the disks gets multiplied by a by a one-dimensional disk, um, and that and that uh, corresponds to suspending once you once you work through this definition. Um, you meant to write n plus one on the second. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. I meant to write n plus one. Yeah. Uh, Okay, so the, the point is that um, that this is the definition of a spectrum. Um, so so this defines a spectrum, which is called MO. The real cobordism spectrum. And likewise, um, instead of working with real vector bundles, we could work with vector bundles with other sorts of 
structure on them. Um, for example, we could do something like this with complex vector bundles, and that would define complex cohortism, um, and so on and so on. Okay, so let me say um, let me say a bit about the homotopy groups of spectra. So if we have a spectrum X, the nth homotopy group of X is defined as the co-limit of pi n plus R of XR. Um, and the maps here So we apply the map um, from XR to loops XR plus one. This induces a map on homotopy. Um, and then we can identify this with pi N plus R plus one of XR plus one. Okay. Um, a few things that should be noticed here. One is that these, uh, these spectra um, These, these homotopy groups can, can be negative. Uh, so, um, yeah, e even though homotopy groups of a space are, are concentrated in non-negative degrees, uh, the, this, this co-limit can start taking on, um, can, can, I'm, I'm Whatever you you all know what I mean. Uh, this this uh, yeah. So th so this is well defined for negative values of n. Um, and the other thing is that if you're working with an omega spectrum, then uh, these maps are um, are isomorphisms, uh, with with the possible exception that in um, that that each space can can introduce. Uh, I guess new new stuff in in its zeroth homotopy. Um, so somehow you see at least all of the positive homotopy of the spectrum in in the zeroth space of the spectrum, as long as it's an omega spectrum. Um, and if if we have a a spectrum E, which is associated to the cohomology theory, E upper star. then um, pi n plus r of er so this is this is the same as maps from sn plus r into the space er which is the same as the degree r cohomology of sn plus r and then using the suspension isomorphism, this is the same as the degree zero cohomology of SN. Okay, so the, the positive homotopy groups of the spectrum, or the non-negative homotopy groups of the spectrum are the same as the cohomology evaluated on spheres. Um, and maybe we should also notice that, for example, the homotopy groups of the suspension spectrum of a space K are the same as the stable homotopy groups of K. Okay. So, um, so these are a bunch of examples of, of things which we may have thought about elsewhere in algebraic topology that we can think about as spectra. Um, and now the, the troubling thing is I've given you a bunch of objects and I haven't told you what maps between them are. And, and this is where things start to get genuinely difficult. So, um, so just, uh, I mean, I should, I should maybe mention that the definition I'm telling you about, I think comes from Boardman and Vogt in the, in the early 60s. Um, and, and I learned about it from this Adams book, which I've listed in the references for the class. Um, but since then, uh, we have started to understand a lot better how to how to describe spectra as as an actual category that behaves like the category of spaces um, and and uh, 
where you don't have to do a bunch a bunch of like messy bullshit to to make things make sense. Um, and so starting next week, we're going to be talking about that. Uh, Ivo is going to tell us about um, about what a model category is, and then and then we'll be able to talk to, to talk about different model categories in Spectra, um, which is going to solve a lot of these problems. Uh, but nevertheless, it's possible to to give kind of a naive um, definition of these of at least the set of homotopy classes of maps between between spectra. Um, and if you look at Adams's blue book, you can see kind of how far you can get just with this naive definition. Um, I mean, he like like I think he ends that section of the blue book defining the Adams spectral sequence. So that's like a pretty serious amount of stable homotopy theory that that you can get through. All right, so here's the definition. Um, so some of you are probably thinking that you know what a map of spectra is already. Um, so the, fir the first idea is um, maps of spectra between X and Y are collections of maps from the nth space of x to the nth space of y um, that make the diagrams commute. So, so we have these structure maps of x and, um, and the structure maps of y, and we should just think about maps that make these, that make these things commute. Okay. Um, now, unfortunately, this is not um, this, uh, this, this is not the correct definition. Um, so here's an example of how this fails. So let's, um, let's write boldface S for the sphere spectrum. This is the suspension spectrum of S0. And the spaces in this spectrum are, are the various suspension, suspensions of S0, in other words, the various spheres. Um, we could also define a, a sort of subcomplex of this, uh, which I'll just call S1. And this is the exact same thing, except we've changed the zero space to be a point. Okay, so there's an inclusion um, from, from S1 into S that induces an isomorphism on homotopy groups. And it seems like if, if you want this object to represent um, kind of spheres up to arbitrarily high suspension, it shouldn't really matter what you put at the beginning. Um, somehow that, that shouldn't affect, uh, at least up to homotopy, the data contained in the spectrum. Um, but there's no map going the other way. So there, uh, there's no non-constant map uh, from S to S1. Um, a, a similar example is you have the Hopf map from the from S3 to S2, and this defines a non-trivial stable um, stable homotopy class. So this is any suspension of the Hopf map is still non-zero. Uh, so this should induce a non-trivial map from the suspension spectrum of S3 to the suspension spectrum of S2. Um, we can write this as the threefold suspension of the sphere spectrum mapping to the twofold suspension of the sphere spectrum. And now one of the expectations that we have for the category of spectra are that we should be able to desuspend things. So this should desuspend to a map from the one-fold suspension of the sphere spectrum to the sphere spectrum. Uh, but on zeroth spaces, this is a map from S1 to S0. And any such map has to be constant. And that means that the um, if, if all of these diagrams are supposed to be commute, are supposed to are supposed to commute, then the uh, then the other maps from um, from the higher spheres in suspension one s to the higher spheres in suspension s also have to be constant. Um, so that seems like a problem. 
Okay, so so let me um, so here here's what Adams does, or what I, what Boardman and Vogue do, I guess. Uh, so first of all, let's restrict to CW spectra. So by CW spectra, I mean all spaces in appearing in the spectrum should be uh, CW complexes. And all maps, uh, all of the structure maps, um, where we're thinking of the structure maps in this form, should be inclusions of CW complexes. OK, this is not a, a huge restriction because um, up to weak homotopy equivalence, any space is a CW complex, and any map can be replaced by a CW inclusion. So then we'll say that a cofinal subspectrum of X is um, for each n a subcomplex uh, a n of X n. such that the, the diagrams commute. So if we think of suspension of AN as being contained in suspension XN, that's contained in XN plus one, um, which contains AN plus one, then suspension AN should, should factor through AN plus one. Okay, so in particular, um, AN defines a spectrum as well. And that spectrum has a map in this, in this naive sense that, that I defined a few minutes ago into X. Um, and so that's that's what a subspectrum, I guess, is. And to be cofinal, uh, what we mean by what we mean by cofinal is that for any cell inside one of the spaces Xn, some suspension of it. is in the appropriate A. So this would be an A n plus R. OK, so, um, so it's a choice of subcomplexes for all the spaces in the spectrum. Those subcomplexes assemble into a spectrum as well. And then any cell in X is eventually in A. So that's why it's cofinal. So now we say that a map from X to Y is an equivalence class of diagrams that look like this. We want a cofinal subspectrum A of X and a naive map from A into Y. Um, these are equivalent. Uh, the, the equivalence relation here is that um, is that we consider two diagrams of this of this form to be the same if there's a even smaller cofinal subspectrum of X such that they restrict to to the same map on that cofinal subspectrum. Um, and likewise, you can define composition by res possibly restricting the even smaller cofinal subspectrum. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm sort of running out of time here, um, but let me just say it, that it's possible to, to define a homotopy between these maps. Um, so you can do this by using this enrichment or this uh, tensoring of spectra over spaces that I, that I, that I, I mentioned. So, um, so you have these cylinder objects on X, which are X smashed with uh, the interval plus a disjoint base point. And so you get a perfectly good definition of homotopy classes of maps. Um, and, and this turns out to be the correct definition. So it's possible to define this, the stable homotopy category in this way. Um, this, there are some issues here. I think the biggest issue is that it's not clear what the space of maps from X to Y is. Uh, the, these 
equivalence classes of maps from cofinal subspectra can't really be topologized or simplicialized in, in any obvious way. Um, it's also, there, may, there might also be some questions about how do we replace a general spectrum with a CW spectrum. Um, and likewise, if we want to think about things like homotopy groups, we might want to replace our spectra by omega spectra. Um, and it's not clear how to do that from this perspective. Um, and this is also a little bit obnoxious. Um, and uh, you know, you might want to, to have a less obnoxious way of, of dealing with things like this. And the solution to that is model categories, and that's what we're going to talk about next week. Okay. Um, so I'm going to stop the recording now.